If you're tired of the standard business and marketing fundamentals, frameworks, and funnels, <laughs> you need a little mischief. Get ready to turn up the volume on the CEO Mischief Maker podcast, where you access conversations with seasoned business owners who have smashed through mindset barriers, innovated the standard boring business and marketing playbooks, and executed future-paced strategies with bleeding-edge tools and tactics to micro-fail their way into massive success and growth. We are Mindset Impact Strategic Catalysts, helping innovative entrepreneurs focus. We are CEO Mischief Makers. Ready to make a little mischief? Hey, hey, welcome back to the conversation. Uh, if it's Wednesday, then you know it's got to be Impact and Innovation Day. And uh, if you haven't listened to my conversation with Evelyn Eckerd uh, on Monday when we talked about uh, mindset, you need to go back and listen to that because this is going to further the conversation. We're going to pick up where we left off and talk about impact and how, well, Evelyn, let me ask you. You are a coach, you are a mentor, you are leaders, you help people with leadership, you help people with that gap. So you help people with specific skills to overcome that gap. And you mentioned in our last conversation, DISC. Now, mm -hmm. I, DISC is, a, is an amazing tool. And there are many interpretations, many ways that you can use mm -hmm. this in your life. And I don't know if you want to use DISC as your example, but how have you, first off, who do you want to impact? in your, in mm -hmm. your business, in your life. And then secondly, how have you used a standard framework that we all have seen, whether it's business or marketing or personal development or whatever it is, how have you taken that, that framework and innovated it and actually personalized it to you? Okay. Yes. Thank you. So impact, the folks I want to impact, I keep thinking about myself when I was in this corporation, right? Like I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, and it it doesn't even need to be in a corporation. It could be anyone who is um, even entrepreneurs who are growing their business and adding employees, right? So, so the impact is how do you connect with your employees? How do you connect in a way that you can develop them, that you... Um, that they become just more productive because they they understand you're having dif you know difficult conversations and that's part of that development and giving feedback so it really is impacting the people in their growth um or impacting i should say the the people at any age a person at any age that wants to continue to grow and may not know how they may not know like what what is that what is that next step for me I, how do i how do i become what what's tugging at me what's 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 happening so how to impact that so and 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 i'm working on really fine tuning that as well because i have you know different clients right now and it's a variety of clients i have an entrepreneur i have um you know, uh, uh, some, I would say, middle management and uh, organization that are fine tuning their skills. And part of that is because they do really well with their task, they get promoted. And then there's no people skill. Like I had a friend who worked in IT. And he was promoted. And he's like, Evelyn, I didn't know I was taking an HR job. So like the people skills, <laughs> we're missing and in that level and so that's that's the gap there that um that i've been working on and helping people understand that people skills can be if you're task oriented and that leads back into this that you can you need to add people skill as a task so so one of the things that i loved about desk and it just a lot of different assessments come from like this for Myers-Briggs, you know, the colors and all of that. It's basically people are right introverts and extroverts. And then are you people oriented or task oriented? And so the task masters get stuff done and they may 
or may not have the people skills. <laughs> and so that's why um, I like to start with this. So part of my framework is that I've used DISC in a way to just open up the conversation and then people become uh, a bit aware of who they are. Am I an introvert? Oh, that's why I don't like having conversations. That's why my energy is drained in meetings or in social settings, right? Or am I, you know, this influential personality that just keeps talking, 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 but doesn't follow up kind of disorganized, <laughs> you know? So it is really, um, the framework just opens up a conversation about understanding yourself more and, and how you communicate and how others communicate could be very different. Mm -hmm. And the people who I've helped literally tell me like, oh, Evelyn, I, this, this helps me more at home than it does at work. And it's because once you understand that communication and how to be effective, then you understand how to connect with people. And it's not about your communication style. It's about their communication style. It's like the love languages, right? It doesn't matter your love language if you're trying to show them you love them. It matters their, la their love language. And so... It's really then the, um, it's kind of EQ, right? The emotional intelligence is kind of like understanding, being aware of yourself and then being aware of them. And then the next, the next level um, that we start teaching and mentoring and training is, do you know how to have those conversations? Can you get curious? What does it take to get curious and ask effective questions? What does it take to listen, to understand, not just to respond. What does that look like? What does that sound like? And then how can you be objective? I'm not putting words that are just kind of blow up, right? Like subjective words that blow up like relationships and start the argument and, you know, the always, the shoulda, coulda, whatevs. <laughs> so, you know, that's the training. And then the coaching is really like, like I mentioned before, the bike riding is really like, Let's let's walk through. Let me walk through this journey with you and to be your support. And if you have questions, I'm here. And then we meet to just see how you're how you're doing. You know, how are you doing? And um, and I have to say that I've I've put someone through the program. And at the end, I felt he was ready. Like you could, you're ready. You're ready. You really don't need a coach anymore. You're ready for that next level. And he's like, oh no, I'm I'm staying with you. <laughs> he's like, you can't get rid of me. And one of the things, one of the takeaways from that through all this was, Evelyn, I sleep better. I never, I uh and there's that never word. I I don't allow my thoughts, I don't overthink and allow myself not, you know, so I'm sleeping better. And as a result, I, I make better decisions. And I feel like, you know what? I'm, I'm ready to start my own business. And going back to what we talked about, I think he walked away with that calmness, being him, kind of listening to himself. Through all that whole thing, we talked the process of, you know, those, the, that framework the outcome was very interesting because he's empowered and feels like I'm, I'm going to trust myself and trust my decision making and believe in myself. And, um, and I was just so proud of him. I was just so proud of him. Um, so I, that's my hope, right? I, as I put people through this process, that at the end, they're just feeling so confident and know their potential and know that you know, something's tugging at them and trust that and lean in to the uncomfortableness that is growth. Because on the other side of that is, oh my God, it's just, it's, it's really a, a beautiful calmness and, uh, and, and building that person up. So yeah, that's, yes. I said a lot. <laughs> so. Yeah, no. And I, and I'm so grateful because 
especially when you start talking about DISC and any of those kinds of assessments that we can do. I love those things. Uh, as much as I can uncover, most of the time, they're not surprising, right? Most of the time, if, if, you, if you pay attention to yourself, you know, when you go to an event, if you are fed by the energy of the people in the room, trained by them. And you know that, and you, you, if you've gone to enough events, you know how to prepare yourself so that you are not left empty at the end, right? If you are drained right. and, and you don't give too much and, and are too high and absorb too much mm. by the, I mean, we kind of know that, but, but when you, when you take that kind of an assessment and you really personalize it, and I love what you said about listening to others, like the different languages, it really is important to know ourselves, mm -hmm. but at the same time, when you're working with someone else, I agree with you. It's not really about whether I'm an extrovert or introvert, introvert, the person I'm working with, do I know enough about them to understand what draws them out? What is, what allows them to, to really live their potential? It's the same thing with relationships. Unfortunately, most of us, we want from others what we give, right? I mean, usually right. that's with my right. husband, I know that very clearly. Mm -hmm. I am very much, I I want to be treated a certain way. Like if I'm, if I'm ill, if I don't feel good, mm -hmm. just stay away from me, just stay away. <laughs> just don't come and touch me. Don't talk to me. Leave me alone. Right. That's what mm -hmm. I want, but he's very different when he's mm -hmm. ill. He wants that attention. He wants me to, to come and check on him and be happy. And it's the opposite of what I want. Right. So we tend to give what we want. Right. When we listen and we see the other person, can we adapt that? Can we give what they need, not what we need? Correct. That's really, that's the tough part. That really is that, the tough mm -hmm. part. All mm -hmm. relationships because we always give what we want. And that's right. not what the other person usually wants. Right. So, right. Yeah. And it it's happened where, and that's really how I use this is okay, here, here the report you know about yourself. And what most people do is take the report and throw it in the drawer. I'm like, no, no, no. There's a part in there and we're gonna explore. Um, you know, I, I did a DISC program with 27 leaders and what was the aha moment for them was, oh, you know, I'm an introvert, introvert and I have limited meetings and I don't want to keep touching base with people. But he was running a business where these, uh, these people were extroverts. So an extrovert needs attention. <laughs> they need to be stroked. <laughs> they need uh, a lot more things. And him, he's like, ew, it's people-y. I don't want to be part of it. And it was like, okay, I get it. I, I know they need that. I know I need to get outside of my comfort zone and my personality and give them that. Now, you don't have to do that eight hours a day, but you need to be strategic about how you're giving them what they need and um and 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 still you know obviously remain true to yourself and, and not deplete your energy like you talked about and there's a way you can do that because we're all we're all the personalities we're not just two of the four we're all the four <laughs> so i that's what i love to use it it's like i i i want people to realize that, you know, like your husband said, he loves, he feels loved when you do X, Y, Z. And, and there could be a different communication style too, where, you know, maybe he wants the details and, and you're like, oh, I don't want to get in the weeds, just top of the waves. <laughs> and I, you know, some people who, when they work or they work with others, if they're very direct, you know, personalities and you're detailed, they're going to cut you off. Right. They're not going to want, you know, they're going to, they're, they're, they're just like, please just give me the results. Just, so it's in sales as well. Like if you, I think salespeople do this very well and you do as well when you're listening and you're having that discovery call, because you kind of understand that person and what they need and what they want. And you deliver that. Uh, 
But in operation and companies or just your day to day, people are not strategic about the communication skills. And so there's room for improvement there. <laughs> MJK, I know there is. <laughs> okay, hold on. If your mindset was shifted, you were inspired to innovate and you were spurred into action, don't just move on with your day. Focus, my friend, and take a few minutes to visit ceomischiefmaker.com to learn more about the value that was shared with you today. Please act now and create some CEO mischief of your own.